Okay, so now am I spotlighted, Lynette? Yes. Okay, yay, I figured it out. Concrete technology. Okay, so hi, everyone. Uh, I'm so happy to be here today. So thank you to Lynette and Mercedes for sending out the invite to us to do a workshop with you all today. Um, my name is Rebecca Gonzalez. I'm a librarian at the San Jose Public Library. I am currently at the Hillview branch, which is as you can see in my background behind me. Um, so some of you may or may not recognize the interior if you have visited my location. Um, but if this is not the closest location to you, fear not. Um, the cards I'm going to talk to you about today can, will actually work at all of our locations. And we have 25 locations throughout San Jose. So I am gonna go ahead and do a screen share. So just bear with me for a minute while I pull that up. Okay, can everyone see it okay? Okay, I saw a thumbs up, so I'm gonna take that as a good sign. Okay, so at the San Jose Public Library, we have a very important mission, and that is to enrich lives by fostering lifelong learning and ensuring that every member of the community has access to a vast array of ideas and information. And the best part about all of it is it's absolutely free to you. So. I'm going to talk a little bit first about student cards um, because every student in DCP should now have a digital card that allows them to check up to, out up to five items at a time. Um, you can also request physical items. So this number could uh, um, apply towards e-resources or it could apply towards print resources. And I'll go into that a little bit more. Um, you also have um, unlimited access to some of our subscription resources, which I will also talk about in a little bit. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about the logistics of how the digital card works. So um, a common misconception is that you need a physical card in order to access your student account. But the reality is with the digital card, the best part is you can't really lose it because it is not an actual physical card. It is just a series of numbers. So with DCP, it is usually a prefix, which is 211939 and then a certain amount of zeros and then your student ID number. So unfortunately, just because the way our system works, you have to have a 14 digit number and we wanted to include the student ID, but because the student ID is not 14 digits, we had to kind of find a way to extend it. So for example, if you have a five digit student ID, which would be one, two, three, four, five, then your library card number would be 211-939-000-12, three, four, five. Now your pin number, which is just kind of a fancy name for password. So the default for the student cards, we may always make it the birth month and day following the format month, month, day, day. So for example, a single digit day or month would have a zero preceding the numbers. So if you did June 1st, it would be 0601. If you did April 14th, 0414, or December 12th would be 1212. So that should hopefully make it easy to remember um, what your PIN number is. Um, of course, if you have any difficulty accessing your account, you can always reach out to one of the SJPL staff. I will include my email address at the end, as well as the email address of one of our school liaisons. And you're welcome to reach out to us anytime about that. So now we get into the fun stuff. This is what we like to call library fundamentals. So of course, when people think of libraries, they think of books, 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 very exciting. So we have a number of ways that you can request your materials. Um, right now, unfortunately, because of COVID restrictions, we are closed to the public, meaning our physical building is closed to the public. However, you can still utilize all of our e-resources and you can request materials via hold that you then pick up with an easy contactless service called Express Pickup. And we actually got the very exciting news today that um, we will soon be able to expand our Express Pickup hours. Um, currently, our Express Pickup hours are Tuesday through Saturday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, you can make an appointment or you can just drop by. Um, there are only a couple locations that require an appointment, but I will show you that when I go through the website. Um, but I do believe that the ones closest to you would not require appointment. You can just show up during those hours and pick up your holes. 
Um, this is an outdoor service, as I mentioned. So at this time, nobody can enter the library, um, but this is for safety protocols. And we're hoping that as restrictions lift, uh, lift we will then be able to um, offer limited um, entry into the library. But for the time being, the express pickup service is pretty great. Um, we also have a service called book bundles that you can pick up through express pickup. And these are curated book bundles for students and families. So basically what happens is you go online and you fill out a form um, for the type of book you're interested in. Um, these are books that would under normal circumstances be considered non requestable because they're in browsable collections um, that are not easy to catalog, um, but to kind of allow students to still have access to these materials. Um, we have actually created book bundles um, and what's pretty cool about these is you can um, select how many items you want what language you want and then a librarian will go through and we will um, we will pick out some items for you and then notify you when they're ready for pickup so it's kind of fun because you don't know exactly what you're getting but it, it um, it's uh, it's bound to be something fun so I'm going to go ahead and move to the next slide. Okay, so um, we have recently, because of the COVID circumstances, we've really upped our digital game. Um, we have an initiative called SJ Access with the City of San Jose, and it's an initiative to provide San Jose residents and students access to all things digital. So this includes internet, free Wi-Fi, and digital literacy programs and opportunities. Um, we do have Wi-Fi hotspots available to the public for checkout. Um, generally, it is a three-month checkout at a time. And what's great about these hotspots is even if you have um, internet already at home, this could just boost your internet speed. So um, I know that with a lot of kids being at home and using the exact same internet connection, it does tend to bog things down. So having a Wi-Fi hotspot can really kind of boost the speed and um, give better connectivity to the people in your house. Um, we also have some pretty cool programs. You can borrow laptops and iPod pads from select locations, which is pretty cool. Um, you would have to go onto our website to find out which locations are currently doing this. Um, unfortunately, at this time, not all of them are, uh, but, but we are working to expand this particular um, opportunity. We've been working with other organizations to kind of refurbish some laptops that we are hoping to get circulating soon. Um, we also have digital literacy classes, which are pretty great. These are workshops that teach basics um, of digital devices, online safety, user privacy, et cetera. And we do have workshops available in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. So some of them cover really basic things. Um, we have some residents in the city that um, even need to just learn basic things like how to use Zoom, which is kind of a big one now. Um, Zoom is new to a lot of people. Um, and then there's also more complex ones as well, um, just depending on what you're interested in. All right, so going back to books, um, a question that comes up a lot for students and parents is, well, what should my child read or, or what should I read? Um, we have a lot of really great resources to kind of help you pick out books for yourself or your child. Um, one of those services is called Staff Picks. Um, we have librarian curated book lists and they are sorted by language, age, genre, and bestsellers. Um, we regularly update these, so that's pretty great. Um, you can check by, you know, genre, like if you like history or you like mysteries, you can check that way. We also have a personal recommendation service. So if you're like, none of these are really, or I don't really know what I want per se, you can go online and you can fill out our online form and a librarian will get back to you within a week. Um, sometimes it's a little more if there's a holiday, but generally there's a, about a week turnaround and we'll give you a list of five books that are selected just for you based on how you filled out the online form. Um, if you are, is there something you just really, really want to read and you do not see it in our catalog, we do love recommendations. Um, so you're welcome to suggest items that we don't have for consideration for purchase. Um, we don't guarantee that we'll be able to purchase these items simply because it depends a lot on our vendor, our vendors and what they have available to us. But if it is within our power to purchase, we will definitely do our best to do so. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about resources that are specific to students. 
Um, for the elementary school age students, we have some student help. We have online homework help. So um, student help, we have a lot of databases such as um, Britannica, which are like an encyclopedia, online encyclopedia and other really great services that are geared specifically towards school age kids, um, elementary school, middle and high school. They're kind of some, a lot of these resources are kind of divvied up based on age group. We do have online homework help. We have a homework club that meets, I believe it's Tuesday through Thursday in the evenings. And this is um, a service for K through eight. Um, we also have um, really cool programs, Kids Reads, events for kids, and I'll show you a little bit more about how to browse for that when we go on the website, and also just some fun stuff, um, games that kids can, can do as well. For preteens and teens, we do have a similar service for, um, like I said, we have databases specific to them. We have a Teen HQ Center that has some pretty cool stuff um, available to teens as well as SJ Engage, which is kind of some online modules that teens can do. And um, right now it's got kind of like a, like a social justice theme for a lot of them. Um, and it's just, you know, opportunities for kids to do like learning modules and um, kind of learn a little bit more about the topic, think a little bit more deeply about it. We have right now virtual community service opportunities for teens. Um, I know a lot of schools traditionally will have a community service requirement. I don't know, given your current restrictions, if you are if you are requiring that. Um, but if you are, we do have some virtual opportunities that teens can do. Um, one, for example, would be a virtual teen book reviewer. So um, I don't know about you, but when I'm trying to decide what to read or what to buy, I tend to go straight to the reviews to see what other people are saying on it. And we recognize that. So we encourage teens to read materials or watch uh, media and then write a thoughtful review about what they've what they've seen so that other people can kind of learn from whether they enjoyed it, whether they didn't enjoy it and why. Um, we also have a lot of really cool blog posts that cover a variety of topics. They may introduce um, library programs, their services, or they may just be about a specific topic that would be um, relevant to teens, as well as we also have um, what we call Life Skills Academy. So those are more modules that um, kids can complete online about relevant to topics that are relevant to them. Um, I talked a little bit about the Teen Book Reviewer Program. Um, it's, it's pivotal in encouraging other teens to read because like I said, um, I, I'm big on reading reviews when deciding what to read. And so it's really important for teens to read what other teens think about it. They don't really necessarily want to know what me as an adult thinks about it. Um, they want to know what their peers think. So they are given a specific uh, amount of guidelines and then they write their book review. They send it to their local branch librarian that they have registered as a volunteer with. We make sure that it meets the guidelines. And then once you hear from us, you get the thumbs up, then you get your community service. You can go ahead and post your review. And um, that's how they earn, they can earn some community service hours. All right, so I'm gonna go over some of the top five e-resources for students. Um, some people may not be comfortable even doing express pickup and that's totally fine. Um, the number one service that I really like to promote for students of um, all ages because they tutor K through college age is tutor.com. This is a really cool, really valuable resource. Normally you would have to pay for a subscription for tutor.com, but if you go through our website and you use your student um, card, it's absolutely free. And they tutor in all subjects and it's a one-on-one -on -one tutoring service. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Um, they also have tutoring services available in other languages, I believe in Spanish and Vietnamese as well. Another really cool resource I like to talk about is Novelist. They have a K through eight, and then they also have a plus um, that is for older readers. It's basically a database of book recommendations um, and people in my profession, we use it quite a bit, but it's actually very easy to use. You just log in with your library card number and pin and then you could say like, for example, you really enjoyed the book, Harry Potter. So you could put in, type in the search, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and you could click on it and it would pull up the book with a little synopsis and the author. And then the tool that I really like is that they have a read-alike tab. So you could do a read-alike for the book or you could do a read-alike for the author. And basically what it will show you is a list of books that have similar tagging meaning um, similar themes, similar subjects, concepts, 
Um, and that would be probably a close read alike for that book. So it is also a really great way to decide what to read. And it also is a great way to kind of see like what the reading level of the material is. Um, we also have some other really cool databases that I mentioned. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to hide this panel so you can see. Okay, so P Power Knowledge and Britannica, these are some pretty cool databases that cover certain topics such as earth science, life, physical science. These are for specific grades. Um, Britannica is broken into three parts. They have portals for elementary, middle, and high school. And so basically with each module, it gets a little bit more advanced in the topic. So for example, in the, if you went to the elementary portal and you did a topic on let's just say bears. It would give a very, very brief overview of what bears are. If you went to the middle school, it would give it a little bit more complex. If you went to high school, it would add an additional layer of concepts that, or uh, subjects that relate to bears that would be at a more appropriate level for a high school researcher. So this is a really great database and it kind of replaces that traditional, um, I don't know if, you all remember, but for the parents definitely probably remember that um, when we were younger, there just used to be like long walls where they had like just tomes of <laughs> encyclopedias. Um, well, now they've moved a lot of that online and they can update it on a regular basis, which is pretty great. So you're getting um, updated material all the time. And then the last thing that I really like to talk about, which is an e-resource is the Libby app. If I could impress one thing on you today, aside from the Express Pickup Service, it would be download this app. It is absolutely free for you to download and it gives you access to a lot of our e-resources in our catalog, um, e-books, e-audiobooks. And once you've created an account and logged in with your library card number, it is so easy to just browse and download. Um, and with the Libby app, you can read directly in the app, which is pretty cool. So. I will show you a little demo of that when we do our web tour. Okay. All right. Um, so we're, before I go on the website tour, I just want to kind of put my address up there. So Rebecca.Gonzalez at sjlibrary.org. What's really cool about our emails is we always have our first dot last name. And then you just have to remember at sjlibrary.org. So the top email address is for me, the bottom email address is for Lauren Hancock, and she is our school liaison. She works a lot with schools, so you can also always reach out to her, especially if you have like a more complex um, question relating to your student cards. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch my share to our website, which is pretty fun. Does anyone have any questions up to this point that you would like me to cover before I do the web tour? We do have one question in the chat, Rebecca. Okay. Yes. The difference between the student library card and the regular library card, what are the biggest differences? Oh. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I'm actually really happy that you asked that question. I'm gonna go straight to the Get a Library Card tab um, because they break it down pretty well. Okay, so when you have a student card, um, you are a little bit more limited on the amount of items you can check out. You can get five physical items or you could get electronic items and you can put on hold up to five items. It expires when the student graduates or they leave the district and it's available all year long. So the difference between that and a regular used card is that a regular used card typically has a much higher limit on what you can check out. So they're going to be moved right now. The whole limit is 10 items versus five, um, but you can have up to 100 items checked out on your card. So that I think is a pretty big difference and it expires every four years and you would just have to renew it after every four years. Usually all you have to do is just show your ID to prove that, hey, I'm still here, this is me. And then we just extend it for another four years. Um, I know because things are a little bit different right now, a lot we're encouraging people to um, sign up for a full access card. And then the first time they go to pick up their items, um, what they would typically do is just show their ID. So they would sign up for an e-library card, which they can then convert into an, um, a physical card if they so choose. 
Um, but an e, a temporary uh, e-library card would basically just give you access to all of our online resources. Um, and so I just highly encourage you to go to this page and you can kind of figure out which one makes the most sense for you. And then if you just kind of forget what the limits are, you can go down over here and just take a look. Um, okay, so that was a really great question. There's a follow up, Rebecca. Um, yeah, absolutely. What if we have a current library card for our child? Can we merge them or does that require a new card? And will it let us sign up if you already have an email linked to that other card? OK, so um, what I recommend is if you have a student card and you have just a regular juvenile card, I recommend keeping them separate. Um, you can check out items on both cards, no problem. You don't need to merge them. You can just use whatever one is your preference. Um, the reason I say that is because the expirations are different on them. Um, so whereas the student card would expire once the student is out of that school, um, the juvenile card could eventually be turned into an adult card and it they can have it forever. And it's got a um, greater checkout limit. So there's not really any benefit to um, deleting or your other card or merging them. And if you have any issues accessing your account, like for example, you haven't used it in a really long time, um, you are always welcome to contact us. You can just go to our help page. You can do live chat or you can call or email and they can answer more specific account questions. Um, Cause a lot of people, what happens like they'll forget their pin number or it's just been so long since they've used their card. They don't have their card number anymore. Um, and if for some reason it's been so long you haven't used your card, like I've had people come in and they're like, you know, I made a card like 15 years ago and I haven't used it. Um, is it still there? Um, well, the truth is if it's been a very significant amount of time and there's no fines on the account, eventually it just gets purged from the system, in which case we just encourage people to fill out a new um, online uh, form. I don't recommend applying for more than one card um, simply because that could cause some logistical issues if someone ever needed to look up an account for you. Um, because sometimes that does happen. People forget that they had a card and then they apply for another one and then something comes up on their account and we're just like, I, I don't understand. Like, this is your account. There's nothing on it or, you know, X, Y, and Z. And then it just ends up being very confusing. So, um, it's just better to have just the one card. Um, I think I accidentally exited out of the site. Okay, so did that answer the question or does anyone have any any more follow up or otherwise any different questions before I go on? Okay. Doesn't sound like it, so I'll go ahead. Um, the one thing I always like to point out, um, we have a language option at the top, so you are welcome. If you have a preferred language, you're welcome to change it. So for example, I'll just use Spanish as an example. Okay, so it then changes all the information on our site to your preferred language. So I always like to just start out with that. Okay, I'll switch it back to English. Okay. All right. So unfortunately, um, we are having some issues with the catalog. So I can't show you an example of actually logging in to put an item on hold. That's just unfortunate. Um, but it is relatively simple. Basically, the first time you go in, you would just click this login tab and you would go into log in or register. And then once you've done that, you will put in your library card number and your PIN number and you'll press log in. Now, the first time you do this, it's gonna ask you to create a username and it will just kind of walk you through the steps of creating a profile. Let me see if it lets me in. I know they've been having some issues today, but let's see if it will, yeah, okay. So unfortunately, we won't be able to actually go into my account to show you how it's set up. But I personally recommend um, doing a username that's easy to remember. I find that it's easier for me to remember this username, for example, versus a 14 digit library card number. Although I am always very impressed because I have seen kids as young as five or six memorize their 14 digit numbers, which is just always very impressive to me um, because I have not yet managed to memorize mine. All right, so going back to the main page, so we did talk a little bit about getting a library card. Um, if you're interested in hotspots or laptops, you can click this tab here. 
there is more information about how to do that, how you can borrow a Wi-Fi hotspot, how you can borrow a laptop, as well as information such as classes, tech support, et cetera. Um, and then just more information about some of our initiatives down here. So I highly recommend checking that out if you're having any issues with the connectivity at your house or you don't have a device um, and you would just, you would be interested in checking one out. Okay, so the next one I wanna go over, Express Pickup. So this is an exciting one. Okay, so this has all the information about when we are available for Express Pickup and how it works. We have a video here that I like to show. If it will load, hopefully. Maybe not. Like I said, there's been some tech related issues, so it may not let me. Here we go. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple process. We have all the information you need on our signage. Um, and then to request an item, basically all you would have to do, so you could click a title, you could do keyword search, title or author. You could look up an item. Okay, and then you can do search. All right, so then what you would do is you could place a hold on the item. So once you've placed a hold on the item, when you're logged into your account, it will send it to your preferred location and you will be notified to whatever email address you have on file that it is when it is ready for pickup. So that is a pretty simple process. Um, if you wanna do an ebook, then you would have to get um, an app or you would have to read in your browser. Um, I would show you an example of how that looks, but unfortunately, because I cannot get into my account, I can't actually show you what it would look like to look at a, a book in your browser, unfortunately. But for example, this one's an OverDrive. So Libby is actually the name for the OverDrive app. Okay, so if let's talk a little bit more about that. So OverDrive. Oops. Okay. All right, so I like to just kind of show, get the Libby app because it will take you to the site and it kind of gives a little overview of how it looks right here. And it's a little bit of work to initially um, create your profile, but once you do, it is very, very simple to go in and out of the app and look at your materials. You can download it for free at the App Store and you can use this little QR code to um, help you get access to that. Okay, so then going back, I will show you some of the other things I talked about. Um, so we have our express pickup information again here. We have our bundles that I talked about, the book bundles. You can fill out the request form. You are limited to two at a time, but you put your name, your card number, your phone number, and then you select which materials you want. Again, these are for materials that typically are not easy to put on hold. So for example, board books, they're not cataloged in a way that would make them easy to request any other way. Okay, you can also go to staff picks. So these are the curated lists I told you about. 
So say, for example, you're really into historical fiction for teens, you can click on this list here. Okay, and then it will show you some recommended reads. Okay, by category. You can also do your personal recommendations. You fill out this list, this format here. You click submit and in about a week you'll get your five um, curated responses. Um, I do recommend not using a school address. And the reason for this is, um, although we will receive your form, when we send you a response, most schools have a filtering system that will bounce back our responses. So um, if you need to create a personal account or just use one that's existing, that would be recommended. Um, if we don't have something, you can suggest items we don't have. You can go here, you fill out the form, you let us know what format you want, and then some basic information and we'll do our best to fulfill that request. Um, okay, we can go to the student help tab I mentioned. Okay, so they have your, home, your online homework resource help, tutor.com, virtual homework club. Keep scrolling down. You can see Wi-Fi hotspots, rock and learn, test prep, a lot of really cool stuff here. If you go to online homework help, it's going to take you to a bunch of different databases. You can find articles, you can find from magazines, newspapers, you can find a college blue book if you just want some information about maybe some colleges you're interested in. Um, we have information where you can find funding sources, information about scholarships, loans, financial aid, etc. We have the general reference, which would be the Britannica, as I was telling you about. Um, we have it divided by subject language, reading and literature, science. And if you scroll all the way down, we even have test prep and online learning. We have driving tests or people who are practicing for their permits. Some of you may be familiar with ABC Mouse. We do have ABC Mouse account checkouts. Um, we have a lot of really cool stuff. Here's tutor.com again. Okay, scrolling back up. And then if you are interested in events, you can go sjpl.org, you can do slash events, or you can just go events for kids or events for teens, depending on what you're interested in. Okay, all of our programming is virtual and it's mostly done through Zoom. So um, basically what you would do is you would register for your, um, register for something you're interested in. Let me find an example of one that isn't full. I do recommend looking into it because um, pretty early on because it does they do fill up. But basically you would come here and it would show you a little information about the program. And then up here is typically a, um, a link where you can register. Um, the link will oftentimes go away if, if it's full. Um, but that is how you can find some online information. Now I know we are running a little bit short on time. So is there anything specific that anybody wanted me to show them that um, on the website that you're curious about or that I talked about? You can see some blog posts down here. This is an example of a teen one or a topic that would be interesting for teens. There's some recommendations. They cover a lot of really fun and cool topics. They have Celebrate Black History Month. Have some information here. Recommended reads. Pretty cool. And of course, you can always contact us. Our, we have a live chat service. Um, every day of the week. We have um, phone lines, we have email addresses you can contact, and that's all up here listed in help, contact us. We also have facts listed. Rebecca, there is a question about help for parents. Help for parents, um, in, in what regard, like finding materials or? And or Maria, maybe if you can clarify, but you said in computer. Oh, like computer classes? Yes. Yeah, actually, so a lot of the, um, if you go to hotspots, laptops and more, so you can go to learning. So depending on what you want to learn, um, we do have beginners computer classes, which are pretty awesome. You can attend live ones. 
And if you go to the events page, you can actually also find programming for adults and you can search by um, subject. So um, say you're interested in maybe just like computer tech, you can also go here. You can narrow it down your search, show more. So you can narrow it down this way you with parenting do tech classes, programs. Um, the Family Learning Center actually has a lot of programming that is tech specific, um, as well as like ELL type things. But here, so for example, they have a tech assistant for active adults, 55 plus. Um, they have in Spanish, a virtual tech hour with Brenda, where you can just go and ask any tech related question and she can help you out with that. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things to explore for all age groups. So it is not just for students. We actually do offer a lot of information for parents as well. If there's something very specific you're looking for, you are always welcome to contact us in, um, by clicking help, or you can email me, and then I can give you a little bit more specific guidance into what programs would be best, best matched for your needs. So I know we covered a lot today. <laughs> so, um, and it, so I think it's a good thing that this was recorded. But yeah, we have a lot of really cool opportunities. And then here's, for example, the Life Skills Academy. They cover a lot of really cool topics. You know, the first apartment, first college class, cooking on a budget. A lot of just really cool topics that students can explore book recommendations websites safety tips etc did you have any questions for me lynette or anything that you'd like me to elaborate on nothing in particular but if any of the parents have additional ideas if you want to you can come off mute and ask questions or you can type a question in the chat if there's anything you're looking for. All right. Okay, I have a question. Uh, yeah. I would like to, to know um, which is a page that I can go directly so I can get some help for my son for the to, to, tutoring classes. Oh, tutoring? Okay. So right now we have it, like I said, unfortunately, it's all virtual right now. Um, but how, how old is your son? What, what grade is he in? He's in fourth grade, but he's having a really bad problem. So he's reading like a second grade level. Oh, okay. That's, that's fine. So um, I would recommend for him maybe the virtual homework club. It's for K through eight. Um, and it is, you can find more information here and you can find out where it is. It does fill up pretty quickly, but they have a pretty much a one-on-one -on -one, um, tutoring module. Um, if you find that it's just too full and you can't get in, um, what I recommend then is tutor.com and tutor.com will, can, can tutor in all subjects. So um, that's, that's pretty good. But for, I, I personally, think that um, if you want to go through the library, the virtual homework club is a really, really great resource. Um, and then tutor.com though is also very great. So all common subjects. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And then hopefully once we're able to reopen, then we would be able to have live tutoring services again. So, but unfortunately right now it's just all digital, all virtual. We do have two more questions in the yeah, chat. Absolutely. One about whether the classes offer certificates. Uh, which, which classes, which, which classes are they referring to? Um, I'm referring to the adult classes. Uh, you know how you said you had classes Are any of those like at the end, would they give you a certificate of completion or that kind of thing? Um, so the only, the only thing that I know of that, that, um, 
actually gives you something is um, we do have career online high school. Um, so that would be specifically for people who are eligible that never got their high school diploma. So those people could actually do the program and they could get an actual high school diploma. But all the other programs that we offer are, are more just um, a lifelong learning type courses. So there isn't typically anything physical at the end that you, you know, could um, put on a resume or anything like that. There's also a question about membership, asking if membership is only for students. I'm not sure if this means a library card, like library membership or something else. Oh, no. Um, I, OK, so if, if they're referring to a library card, um, they can absolutely get their own library card. They do not have to be a student. So um, I would recommend looking either into the e-library card option or the temporary card option. If you don't already have a full access card, you would just go to sign up. Okay, so it talks about what you can do with it. You fill out this form and it is good for a year and you can choose what design you want. And then you would pick that up the first time you go to pick up your items. So yeah, parents are, can absolutely get their own cards. I don't see any other questions yet. I see lots of thank yous and you know, unfortunately a couple of people had to leave. Oh, understandable. Let me go ahead and exit out of the stop share. There we go. Well, I just wanna personally thank you all for taking the time to show up today. Um, and I hope you got something out of this workshop. And I hope that if you're not already library users that you will become library users. And if you're already library users that you'll just find more new and exciting things to try out. And thank you again, Lynette, for inviting us here today. Absolutely. Rebecca, thank you so much. And if anyone oh. has additional questions, we will hang on for a bit so that folks can ask any questions that you might have felt um, shy about asking while Rebecca was presenting, but we're still here. We still have time. So feel free, take advantage of it. But thank you again for being here with us. Yep, absolutely. I'll just hang out here till you till you're all ready to go. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Bye, Daniel. <laughs>
And then Maria, I see you popped in. Did you have any questions for the San Jose Public Library? Let me just double check. She's not in the chat. I know a few people were having tech issues and can yeah. definitely benefit from those Wi-Fi boosters because I've saw yeah. a few people who kept bouncing in and out. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Thanks, Sarah. Sarah. Have here. a good evening. I know sometimes I've had tech issues and it's always at the most inopportune times. Hi, Maria. We have uh, about 10 minutes before we will be closing up shop. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope it wasn't confusing for anyone that we had two links also, one for Spanish and one for English. I think that was great because okay. it meant that parents could, oftentimes we're, we're doing things where we're translating and mm -hmm. it always slows things down for everybody. Yes. And the fact that we were able to do it live with both groups at the same time, I think was really positive. Yeah, I think so too. And I, I think a lot of times, um, my struggle is because I, I am not as familiar with working with the trans